Hey guys, Key here from Kegland, and I just want to talk to you about mini regulators. Up until now, a lot of you guys have had choices that look like this, this type of mini regulator and this one here, and honestly, we didn't really love them, but that's just what was available. All our competitors were selling the same thing, and pretty much that's all there was. So we felt there was a lot of areas where these types of mini regulators could be improved. So we came out with this mini regulator here, which is absolutely freaking awesome. It's much better than these ones. Now the first mini regulator I wanna look at is this one here. Now this is a very common design. It's very inexpensive to make because it only uses a very small amount of bar stock here, which you machine out. We make the ones that we sell out of brass. So it's a little bit better than some of the other ones out there, which are made out of aluminum. And those ones, are, look, we found to be really bad when we tested those samples. But look, lots of other competitors are selling this type of thing. And let me show you some of the issues we had. Firstly, when you have the bulb, if you screw the bulb in here, you might find that it's really frustrating that when you screw this bulb in here, there's a split moment where it punctures the bulb, but yet it hasn't actually, the, the seal here hasn't actually sealed on the face of the cylinder. So this bulb's punctured, but it hasn't yet, the seal's not pushing up against here. Now, sometimes when these little mini regulators are brand new, you might find they work pretty well. But this problem gets exacerbated as that seal in there starts to depress flatter and flatter, you'll find that the bulb has to screw further and further in, making the problem even worse. So that's a real frustration with these little mini regulators. The other thing is they can only really take one little thread type here. So there's not really a bush or adapter. Basically it has this little thread in here and it takes a 16 gram bulbs and maybe a couple other bulb sizes, but basically you're restricted to these little you know, disposable bulbs. So uh, that's one of the major problems with this. The regulator itself was a bit dodgy. We didn't get really great pressure control there because the diaphragm mechanism was so small in there. You didn't get excellent resolution with your pressures there. But one of the most annoying things is really the gauge here. Certainly this thing was really compact and you could fit it in your pocket. And you know, that was one nice design feature, I suppose. But the gauges here were just so easy to damage. So I found, you know, when I'd taken this to a party, there was a couple instances when I started using this type of mini regulator that the gauge would, and look at this, if I just drop it like that, already I can see there's a little small hairline crack here where it's actually, even after that very small um, drop there, I've got a little hairline crack here and that's sort of really frustrating because I'm sure if I dropped that a couple more times, this thing would be totally stuffed. Then if you move on to this type of regulator, this was a bit of a step up. This, to be honest with you, the machining was a lot better on this bad boy. It was kind of nice that we had um, a pressure release valve on here, nice safety pressure release valve. Now it wasn't great that we didn't know the exact pressure on there. This one had no pressure release valve whatsoever, but um, it still had the same problem that we had before. If you screw this bulb in here, you end up puncturing the bulb and then a few moments later, if you screw this up really, really quick, then it will seal. So you always lose a bit of gas. And with a 16 gram bulb, you don't really have that much gas to begin with. So if you're quickly screwing this in while it's sort of cooling down like that, sort of, you know, gas is all coming out. And you're like, oh, gee, you got to do that up. And you twist this up like that and eventually seal. But yeah, when the seal's brand new, it works okay. But once again, when the seal starts to get worn, you'll have to screw several more times to, uh, to get a perfect seal. And it's just like a waste of gas. It's really frustrating um, to have that. And sometimes if the gas is leaking out really fast, you'll find this will get really cold, making it harder to even screw that up in a hurry and, uh, and get the, uh, the gas uh, little cylinder bulb to, to couple. One slightly better thing about this one is the gauge is better protected. You've got a bit more plastic here. It's, a, it's, it's sort of built into the side of the regulator body, which is kind of a better feature, I suppose. And the knob and diaphragm mechanism is a slightly larger diameter. So we did find that these actually get uh, better pressure control. Another thing with these types of uh, mini regulators is the bushing would come undone. And this was kind of handy if people wanted to you know, undo this bushing and use it for different cylinder thread sizes. So you can see under here, some people would basically screw this off. And then if they wanted to use this with, let's say, a soda stream bottle, so they wanted to use it with one of these bad boys. Look, these are our own branded ones, but obviously soda stream, soda stream make their brand of, uh, of ones as well. So this wouldn't screw in directly. What you would have to do is get a soda stream adapter and screw this in like so, and then 
screw it onto the gas bottle like that directly. Now, depending on the SodaStream adapter, you'd also have the same problem. So if you had one of our sort of basic SodaStream adapters, you would still have to screw this in and then you would still be stuck in that position that potentially um, you could be pushing the pin down on the SodaStream bottle and gas would be flying around out, out everywhere while it hasn't yet actually screwed in far enough to seal on the uh, on the seal here. So you'd be stuck in that situation, gradually, frantically screwing this on, trying to get it to couple and all seal up, and then eventually get it, you know, coupled. So that can lead to, yeah, once again, a bit of a waste of gas. Now, one way around this is we made better uh, designed soda stream uh, adapters. So these are the deluxe one. So at least with this additional part, you could screw that down, and that would push the core down in the middle of the device and then depress the pin on the soda stream adapter so you could gradually screw this in and do that. So that would help that situation, um, but still it was an extra part that you had to purchase, making the whole mini setup that you've got a little bit more bulky. And a lot of guys with these mini setups, they're trying to keep them as compact as possible because they're trying to take this to barbecues or parties where they can just put it in a backpack or put it in their cooler and um, you know it doesn't take up too much space. So uh, that was one thing we also wanted to change at the same time. Now another frustrating little thing about these uh, little mini regulators is when you screw these ball lock disconnects on. So a lot of you guys, you know, you're screwing the ball lock disconnect directly onto the mini regulator, and this is so you can hang it off the side of a keg. Often was the case if people are using like one of the mini kegs and uh, putting this in a cooler or something like that, they'd put this directly on and you know, pop the disconnect onto the keg post. That all sounds fantastic, but one of the really other annoying things about this is once you'd screw this into this, let's say this was facing the wrong direction or something, often people would twist this like that and just alter the, you know, the 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 orientation because, you know, they put need to put the esky lid down or the, the cooler lid down or something like that, or they needed to, for instance, swivel it a, one way or another and it would, you know, move around and stuff like that. And if you look closely at this assembly here, this is where we had a lot of problems with, uh, you know, especially beginners complaining about these. So what you would do is you would screw this into this part here, but you still had a thread in there and another thread in there and because there were three threaded components in there we had this problem that people would do this one up and then they would say oh we I've got to turn this or somebody knocks this and you can see already that's coming undone there so instead of this just swiveling around just that slight knock makes this piece come undone and you can see now that is not sealing on the thread there so you had these multiple connections all swiveling around on the same axis making you know this type of thing easy to leak same thing could happen sometimes with this piece and this would undo from the body of the uh, regulator itself so that was also you know very very frustrating i guess so honestly guys these little mini regulators are a thing of the past so honestly they might be slightly cheaper but i would just forget about these bad boys we've got this type of mini regulator which is seriously awesome and let me show you why. The first thing you'll notice is we've got a hex body, so it's easy to get a spanner on here and you can sort of couple with a few different parts of here and twist it onto the gas cylinder and maneuver it. We've fixed that exposed gauge issue. So in this one here, you've got this exposed gauge which easily gets damaged. This one here is still a little bit better, but this bad boy, you can see the gauge has brass going all the way around it. So even if we did drop it like this many, many times like so, you could drop it even from a reasonable height like this, gauge is perfectly fine, so nothing wrong with that. The other thing is the gauge itself is really easy to change over. The standard gauge that we've got in here may not necessarily be the most accurate gauge for your particular application. For instance, if you're coupling this with a little growler and you only ever wanna to go to 15 PSI, you might wanna get our zero to 20 PSI gauge, for instance. But if you want to go all the way up to a you know 150 you know psi or something like that, what you can do is just undo these two screws here. The gauge just pulls out. There's no threads or anything like that in the gauge itself. It just has this O-ring seal at the back here, and then you just drop this gauge in. So you can basically switch interchange the different gauges. Now these are the same spare part gauge that we use in our inline regulators, the little plastic ones that we have, and also the blow tie units as well. So it's a common spare part which we stock and a lot of our retailers and distributors stock as well. So you don't have to you know, try to source these obscure parts if you happen to break anything. 
Um, so that's one thing. The other thing you'll notice is it's got this handy safety pressure release valve. Now, if you look at some of the other regulators, yeah, certainly this has a pressure release valve, but hey, what's it actually set to? You don't really know. You can probably adjust it or work it out, but you know, you don't really know, and it's not easy to change it if you're going from, let's say, a growler with a low pressure limit to a keg which has a higher pressure limit. But these ones are all color coded, so you can whip that one out, and then you can get a gray pressure leave, relief valve and screw it in. Once again, we've tried to keep all the parts as common and as compatible as possible. So you get a keg gray pressure release valve or our red one, which only goes to two and a half PSI. And they're the same ones that are used with our, you know, Firmzilla or kegs or a lot of the other stuff or mini kegs and stuff like that. So you had mini, uh, you know, the, the stuff is, even though it's a mini size, it's still using compatible, you know, parts to our larger regulators and stuff like that. Okay, so here's the moment of truth, guys. I've got this little 16 gram bulb and look at how easy it is to couple. I just screw that in the underside there, making sure the pin is screwed all the way out. So I've got that in the anti-clockwise direction there. And I've also got the regulator out as well, the regulator knob. So I screw this in just until it's hand tight and firmly against the seal there like that. As you can see, no gas is leaking out anywhere. Then I screw this uh, core depressor or actuator pin down, and there's a little bit of resistance. You might be able to hear it if you listen carefully. I'm just gonna screw this a little bit further. I'm not sure if you guys heard that at all. It was very faint, but you just hear the gas coming from the cartridge here and filling the body of the regulator body. So now this thing's ready to go, and if I screw this uh, knob here, you can see I've got perfect control, no wasted gas at all, much easier to couple and a much more reliable connection in general. Now let's try exactly the same thing, but this time with the soda stream bottle here. So uh, I should also mention that in Australia we use these particular soda stream threads. They're a little bit different to the threads used in America and also in uh, in Europe. So guys, if you're gonna buy one of these mini regulators, don't you know fly to Australia on a holiday, buy one of these and wanna take it home because they're not gonna fit. Unfortunately, the soda stream threads are different in each country. So yeah, please, if you wanna buy one of our mini regulators, make sure to go to your local distributor in that country. Don't buy one interstate and get it shipped internationally or anything like that. You have to go to your local distributor and we will send out these with the correct threads for your particular country country type. Um, all right, so I'll get this soda stream bottle, I'm gonna screw it in. Yeah, once again, making sure this is screwed outwards like that. And I'm just gonna screw this on the underside. As you can see, I don't need any adapter, soda stream adapter or any other bulky parts. I just screw that in until it's firmly in place. Also gonna make sure that this is screwed outwards. So I've got, you know, that's not pushing down the diaphragm at all. And as you can see, if I just screw this down, once again, you can probably just hear it There we go. I don't know if you heard that at all. It's really, really faint on the microphone, but um, yeah, the gas is now filled into the body of the uh, regulator and I can screw this down. And as you can see, once again, got perfect control, um, you know, without the, uh, the hassle or the need for an adapter and without all that wasted gas and this hurried, you know, screwing it in and out, you know, before it's sealed and the pins pushed down. Now the other thing I wanted to show you guys is how easy it is to change the adapters on here and the advantage of this, this particular design. So as you would have remembered from this design, if I screw the disconnect in here, I have all these coupling issues and threaded bits to come undone, really, really frustrating. With this particular type of uh, design, the, the, the regulator comes with a few different fittings. It's got two outputs here, so you can actually connect two things at the same time, but also so you can change the orientation because different orientations are gonna suit different types of setups, right? So um, yeah, this particular barb which comes included, this is the Duotite compatible barb. So what you can do is you can put the Duotite fitting directly on there and there you go, that's your gas line connected. Or the other thing you can do is if you didn't want to use you know, a Duotite fitting for some reason, you just wanted to use a, uh, a hose, you could push it over that barb like so and then secure the hose clamp. You know, that's the other old fashioned way to do it, I guess. But with these fittings, these have a little grub screw on the side like that. So you just undo this grub screw like so, take this out and as you can see, it's got an O-ring. It's not actually a, a threaded component. That makes the sealing mechanism much more, you know, reliable because I don't have this sort of thread to seal and thread to come undone when you're using it. And I can put this piece in there like that. The other thing I can do is, maybe change the orientation. So if you've got a stainless steel disconnect, 
where the actual output of here goes at a right angle. You might find that actually coming into the side of this uh, works better with the stainless steel disconnect. However, if you get one of the plastic disconnects where the gas comes out at a 60 degree angle here, actually you might find that works better. And I'll show you a little bit later of how this sits on a keg to make, uh, to make, 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 make a little bit more sense of that. But um, yeah, so if I wanted to change the output, same thing again, I can undo this. So it comes with the plug in one of the outputs like that. I just undo this grub screw like so. Pull this out, and then I could put the plug in that side if that was uh, you know better for some reason. Um, yeah, I know a lot of these tight little mini keg setups or little coolers and stuff like that often don't, don't have that much space. So finding the optimal orientation, you know, is often uh, you know really important. Um, and I can just screw this little grub screw in like that, and that's ready to go. Uh, now with this disconnect, I can screw this onto the side here. And once I've tightened this one singular nut here, I can now rotate this as long as I like in any direction, knowing that I've still got a perfectly airtight seal. So that's a really important function, I think, of this particular regulator. So there you have it, guys. That's the uh, new Kegland mini regulator. Look how nicely it just sits on the side of the keg like that. And I can just put a strap around here, or I could fit this in, for instance, the you know our jet keg backpack or something like that and take it off to a party. Anyway, look, that's it for today. If you want to hear about any of the cool stuff we're coming up with, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel, the bottom right hand corner there, hit subscribe now, and you'll be kept up to date with all the cool new stuff that's coming out. The other thing is you can join our Facebook community group. On our community group, we've got like over 5,000 members now, just like yourself, sharing tips and tricks on how to use the gear. And it's also the place we give out promo codes and stuff like that, and prize giveaways. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. See you guys next time. Bye.